Hold. I forgot that he's born on the day that Counter Strike was released. That's actually so cool. It is kind of it's it is cool kind of weird like, how that how that happens. Like it could have been anyone, but it's him as well. It's yeah. foolishly <laughs> good. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, maybe actually, Jason, there's a reason for that. And it's not because, and we're going to get into this game any second now, it's actually not just coincidence. It's because he is Gabe Newell's cyborg creation. Um, and uh, he was an invention of Valve to see if they could actually create AI, much like they did uh, for the sort of Dota. Well, hold the phone. We got a mid push. Ooh. And we got Dupree and Magisk just smacking them down. This is a this is a tone. So, oh dear! Oh dear! Almost gave it back. Glaive able to spin. They're lucky. Vinny is gonna hold it out with the Glock. Vinferno. Vinny, my boy. He's a cool, dude. Bomb will wait, uh, but very quickly recoverable. It's in vision of Glaive. No, it's not. He's not quite that far around the corner. Thought he was. He's just peeking the bodies. Bodies that are all stacked up inside of Banana. Three of them there and one, well, three there-ish. One's on the bottom of the T-stairs. That came obviously down from the top side of middle. And immediately Lucky falls back toward the pits. You can hear the chickens clucking. The roosters cawing. That's a crow cause. Okay. All right. Whatever. I'll tell you a good rooster joke later, but uh, it's not appropriate for stream. As Vinny tries to get the headshot on Lucky, crosses it over. Now he knows at least where he is, but that's going to force him to swing out wider and bring Dupree into the picture. He gets Vinny in the backside, and Yuri is left uh, very alone, but so far so good. Still looking for Lucky right side. He's left. He's back over behind the broken wall, and he's trying to rush him down, knowing there's a very finite amount of time, not only left in the round, but to get him before the rotations arrive. Yeah, and even if he was to get that kill on Lucky, you can see Glaive there just turning the corner, ready to fight for him to get the bomb. So that was always going to be a desperate situation. Ever since Astralis pushed down mid, Dupree and Zip with those open or excuse me, Dupree and Glaive with those opening kills. Actually, it wasn't even Dupree. It was Magisk. I've lost my mind from 40 it's, seconds ago. You know what? We're going to get it back, though. This is the pistol round, so we're going to build into this one. It uh, doesn't take long to lose your mind, Jason. One to nothing for Astralis, and just Glocks picked up for the Furious side of things. Deep Utility. And Zip is going to push down, and ooh, he wanted to jump over and go for that, but he's just going to be able to find it around the edge of the Molotov instead of burning his little toes off. And Magus going to chill. Full banana control. This is a good opportunity in this round for Astralis to build up some bank again. We're not even going to have to drive home the point about how good Astralis is with utility on this map because they're already proving it and Magisk is going to get the final kill into the round. Two to nothing for Astralis and the guns are going to come in for Furia. So guns for Furia and let's see if they are furious. Oh god, I've become everything that I hate. <laughs> Obvious cliches, what is wrong? Get me out, Jason. Nah, we got a few more days. We got a we got a week left. We got eight days. Slightly deeper smoke down middle than uh, used to seeing in the past, and very boostable behind. But they're not going to do that just yet. As we'll see. Quite a bit of spam going in both directions. Pretty even. Day. Well, a little bit more actually overall, I suppose, when you consider that three players took damage from the Furious side, but overall, Mage is down to 67, and that's worse. Dupree gets Art, he's gone, he heard the dink, followed it up with a body shot as he tried to fade away. But only Michael Jordan in game six can fade away. Maybe it was game seven, I don't even remember the reference. Well, I mean, you're going at, you know, the GOAT. There's a lot of, a lot of fadeaways in his career. It's true. Two-player defense on A for the moment. You can see Dupree is just finding his way towards Arch. And Fury is going to try and wrap. Dupree is going to turn this corner, and the question is, can he get away after he gets the information? I don't think he spotted that. He might be able to find this one, though. Oh, it's all about timing of when he actually spots this and when he turns away. There it is. Gets his head ripped off, but at least he's got the intel. What does Zip do? He's boosted up. Boosted, but he's... Yeah, exactly this. Looking the wrong direction for how that boost typically works. They don't... 
expect him to be there. He still finds two. It'll do. Zipix will find Mr. Drop, and immediately it is now a dead chicken. Uh, and three nothing for Astralis. Why are there so many chickens on Inferno? I mean, I know why there's not on Nuke, because radiation poisoning and all that. Also, why do the buildings in the distance look like they're straight from PUBG? Never noticed that before. Doesn't matter. Uh, chickens, Jason. Chickens. I've been looking into chickens recently, Matthew. Oh, you want to get some, don't I'm going to get some chickens next year. Why do you want to get chickens so badly? I want eggs. You can just go to the store. I know, but I want them fresh. Murderer. I think it'd be cool. But, but hang on, Jason. You say you want chickens, but we still don't know who came first. So maybe actually you need to get an egg. An egg in an incubator? Yes. You know, apparently there's no way to tell if a chicken is a... Male or a female? Yeah. I think you should just uh, actually get a pig. I looked into that as well. I knew you did. I looked into that. I looked into goats also. Well, unfortunately, I'm not for sale. I told you. you, <laughs> price, you know? Goats are, uh, you need multiple goats, or else the one goat would get sad, and he won't produce as much milk as you'd like. Also, I don't have a big enough yard for goats, because they like to eat grass. Yes. I d well, the good news is you wouldn't have to cut your lawn. Yeah, we also wouldn't need to do any weeding. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, we'll start with chickens and see where things go from there. Yep. I presume you're going to have a farm in your future. It's good. You got the flannel top already. That's the end game. Is it? Yeah. You want to be up every morning at 5.30? Not that kind of <laughs> Not that kind of a farm. Just get out of bed, Jason. No roosters on, in this household. Okay. Well, uh, cows don't milk themselves. A little bit of a pause, hence our digression into farm animals. <laughs> as if a horse whinnied as soon as I said that. Well, we'll see what's going to be... Coming out of this round, because obviously right now Furia is struggling to get into it. Astralis having a fantastic start. Dupree looking pretty calm and collected. I like these jerseys, the little arrows off the shoulder, even on the, well, in this case, the romper, uh, the jumper. What, what is it? It's, it's like a, it's not a bomber, but it's like a windbreaker. I was pro I probably am going to say this wrong, but I remember when I played uh, soccer or or football, football whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to go for, um, as a as a younger kid, I had like a practice jersey that had the the Hummel arrows on it, and I recognized it, and I was like, "Oh, that's weird. Astralis is, is covering, copying Hummel with those with those arrows on the shoulder." And then I went to the Hummel website and found their jerseys in the shop, and that's that's my story. That's pretty cool. I hadn't even realized they were sponsored by them. Huh? Interesting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they uh, they had a whole section um, Astralis in a number of the Danish stores. They were, I think, w weren't they polled as for a, a period of time the second most popular sports team in Denmark behind FC Copenhagen? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I think I, I don't, but I, I I didn't look into that, so I don't know like what metric they used to really determine that. Anyway. Sure. I, I, yeah. I, some sort of survey with the. But kids. having been to Copenhagen as well and seen some of the events they throw, it, it wouldn't surprise me if and that was see, true. The prime minister's been there on a number of occasions. He's been. been yeah. You know, uh, there to support the team. Tweets about them all the time. I'm sure he's still supportive of them now. I'm sure he's revoked Device's citizenship already. <laughs> and, uh, the the passport gets cut. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go, I round he's four. He's juggling nades. I don't think we've seen that yet. Dupree just juggled, juggled an extra HE toward the B side. It's a good way to lose a hand. <laughs> You're not wrong. Dupree is already back over in position as well. Takes the bomb down. He will be ready to bait Lucky into position. Should it, goes that, should it go that far, excuse me. They had to put a smoke down in the corner just to recover the bomb, but back over toward the pit side. May just has your chickens inside of the pit with him, Jason, and uh, a lot of damage done. 13 HP for Art, 16 for Drop. I said that in the reverse order, but the same amount of HP for the opposite name. And the extra HE on this side of the site might come into play, or maybe it was too much. Maybe he should have just had his gun out, and Dupree actually inevitably got him killed. Oh, that was weird from Glaive. You don't often see a mistake like that out of the, the, the Astralis captain. They should be able to recover. Unarmored opponents, low on HP, as you kind of halfway oppositely highlighted earlier. Dupree's taking shots at range, and there's Lucky to close it out. Yeah, I, I'm assuming Glaive was stepping forward to throw the nade hard off the wall to bounce towards the car, uh, and just just found a weird timing. Four to nothing, pretty quick four to nothing, and guns are now out for the Furious side of things. AKs across the board. Dupree looking almost tired. Doesn't look his joyous self right now. He just looks, you know, why am I here? Let's just get this over with. You know, when 
when you've made and won so many, so many majors. Yeah, maybe the Legend stage can be a little bit like, ugh, oh, this again? Can't we just skip this yet? Dupree gonna take down Art and his teammate, because he don't care. They lined up, and he actually gets another kill and forces a TK. So Dupree is extremely efficient in this round. Super efficient. Uh, just to note, by the way, the A site is B, and the B site is A. We got source bomb sites going on right now, and it's disgusting. Oh my god, I forgot all about it. Henry's not even here, and we're still giving source credit. That's incredible. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, this we, we're gonna call it the way we know them, and uh, uh, yeah, if you're new to Counter-Strike, uh, it's just a graphical error that was... Uh, it is going to be Fixed as well. It is going to be fixed, absolutely. It's just that it's you know, a lot going on, and uh, simple thing to do. Easy mistake to make. I still do it all the time. Bombs playing at A. All right, let me go to B. Oh, wait. I've gone the wrong side. Flash outs. Yuri's inside of the pit. He's the one deterred by that, but they've got to push through the smoke and drop is up above. He will drop down off the box and try and chase down Lucky, but he's actually elevated himself in a second position. Shin. Clever from Lucky to try and go up and over, but drop is ready for it. Two kills this round. Three in total, and the first for Furia in terms of the overall score. Four to one. Yeah, nice positioning from drop. Able to manage the run in through the smoke into the bomb site. Astralis not able to trade any of those kills. Left Lucky in a tough position. So, 4-1. to one. That's a really good man-down victory. Two versus three. It's converted in the post-plant. And Furia get their first round on the board. Now, the money for the Astralis side of thing is not pretty. Four players beneath $1,000. They'd obviously really enjoy taking this one. We're seeing that deep smoke each and every round as well in mid. And Zip gonna push up around the edge. Art was burned out into the open. Somehow, I don't know how Zip dodged each and every bullet, but he survives with 8 HP. Zipix takes down Drop with a nade. Remember, this is the map as well that Astralis really defined how much utility damage utility can be brought. Meta. Yeah, big time. It can be brought to the game. And uh, it was specifically where we are now. And you can already see the uh, scorched cobblestones at the feet of Yuri and Vinny. Now boost Dupree on the windowsill of 32 Banana Lane. Actually, maybe that's CT lane. I'm not sure. Yuri's ready to go, but the Molotov to cover off Emo is countered by that one of the CTs, and that means it's easy to deploy a smoke without missing. As Glaive puts that down, gap on the inside by Orange is one. Tries to fire at it, but that just baits them in toward Dupree. He doesn't have a lot of vision, but he's got the angle nonetheless. Okay, Serato, however, will have Glaive down, and Yuri is still trying to spray and find Dupree, and... That alone is going to force him to move, force him to rotate, which means the plant will come in, but it is a 1 HP, 1 on 4, and now a dead Yuri. Yeah, no no complaints with that kind of a defense. Good timing, the Molotov goes down, obviously holding the smoke as well and popping it as soon as they're ready to come through. Glaive got, I think, caught off by a gap in that smoke, which can happen when it's thrown onto a Molotov. It's tough to predict the spread of that, still. No big deal for Astralis, whose defense is uh, is looking good. And yeah, we touched on it, starting the challenger stage 0-2 and, and having to run the gauntlet of a series of best of three victories to make it to the legend stage, backs against the wall the entire time. It's... I think... When it comes to Astralis, when you have them at that point of getting knocked out of a tournament, it, every team in the world was just crossing their fingers and saying, please knock them out in the group stage. Oh, Take yeah. care of Astralis when you can. And that slipped away, and I think now we're going to see an Astralis that is uh, is properly warmed up into this event. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the wake-up call you need, and it's the right time for it when the competition's uh, not quite as strong as, say, this stage. If that happens in the Legends, they might not get away with that. And you're absolutely right. Teams like FaZe that, you know, I'm, I'm giving that semi-final outside shot to, they need a bit of assistance like that, right? It's one major opponent gone, and that's, that's a position at the top that someone else can occupy. So you're absolutely right. Um, Vinny, meanwhile, with the Deagle is going to look to his right as he walks up, but now is still considering the possibility for someone to be over toward the cubby position. Boom! That is a dead chicken. They look like confetti when they blow up, Jason. <laughs> Delicious confetti. Lucky finds the first kill. That's Art into Pit. The follow-up, though. How much strength does the follow-up have? Vinny's going to try and lurk around Rapside, but he needs someone to take attention in that direction. Dupree, yeah, finally caught 
with fighting at two different angles. Lucky and Magus, double pit setup, still very difficult to clear out. It's all on Yuri, can only get the one, but the young gun of Astralis has to hold on a little bit longer, doesn't want to go down, needs this position to stay secure for his teammates for the retake. Lucky waiting it out. It's a quick pick toward the site as he looks through the hole, but he's just trying to bait them at this point. Keep the attention in their direction because he knows his teammates are working in the other side. He wants the attention. He wants them looking away. They aren't. And in fact, when they do look back, they find Lucky as well. It's all on Zipix. And the dancing around the pole is a problem as Caserato takes down Zipix. It's Furio with a lovely round and an AK picked up at the end as well. How the hell did they win that round? Especially once the bomb gets planted and they're in that two on three stuck in the bomb site. If you're Astralis, that's everything you wanted. That's the whole point of Megas and, and Lucky staying alive that long is to control that portion of the map and make sure that Furia has so few options to play the post, post plant. And I mean, they just did it so well, even coming in with, with mostly, you know, weaker weaponry. So it's Astralis who are forced back, unable to convert the retake. Three round lead, 5-7 Deagle and P250 on Glaive. P250. Yeah, what a way to break back the economy that quickly. That was a huge round to win. Fury is back in this. They do have Glaive always spotted. I was going to say, they have him up at the sandbags, which wasn't actually Molotov. Now they flash over, but Glaive smartly ducks down before that. Uh, remember, the intensity of the flash is dependent or, uh, I guess, determined by your distance of crosshair placement to where it actually detonates. And that was well over his head, so uh, he was fine. Looked down the lane, but then really just didn't matter because he died anyway, Jason. Died anyway. It's unfortunate. Made just enough damage to allow the P250 can, to convert a couple kills. Okay, Serato takes out the Zipix or Zypex. Are we going to get into that one again? Zip Nix. <laughs> now Zipix and uh, Vinny manages to get lucky. No one so far getting kills in return. And this should pretty much wrap up the round. The 5733 is inside, however, of the chapel. He's got one already. He wants to keep Art contained. Art does have a weapon that's valuable. An AK-47 that could quickly be grabbed and pulled over. Dupree has it. The problem is now he's got to get out. And if they're smart, they sit in the site and make sure that he can't leave through CT. Yeah, unless it you know, gets to the point of detonation, they're even going to try and flank onto him. So they'll start to escape that direction. I don't think Dupree could possibly get away with this. I think you can survive in this in this room. Well, he has 100 HP still, doesn't Well, the problem is Yuri. It's it's Yuri that might be able to do some damage and cut him off. Ooh, he is going to go down. Okay. He probably thought someone was over a tree trying to hold him in there. But obviously, Caserato and Vinny couldn't have done it. They were too low in health to stay that close to the bomb timer. So regardless, Furia gets a third round of the board. Astralis has a two-round lead. Not bad, but it's back to the guns for the Astralis defense. So Dupree's over there challenging your 5-7. Uh, your I like it. I, I do think it's a great gun. And when when it looks as good, pretty as that, I'm not a skins guy, but pink, whew, I'm all about it. So I don't blame him. I would use that in the gut rounds, which is also why I'm not a pro player. <laughs> I was going to say, more of a 5-7 player than an AK. Ooh, okay, back away, Zip. I know you yeah. want to get aggressive. That's no fun. That's good from Furia, though. I mean, they need to start. They've been they've been punished by some of the aggression, by some of the presence over at Top Banana. Oh my lord! He of walked course, that. Glaive gets away with that. That's pretty nuts. Uh, this is a little more standard um, than the Inferno game that you and I casted the other day, and that we're seeing Bananic, you know, control be a big factor early in the round, and that's that's the meta we're used to seeing. Contested for. Yeah, absolutely. And interestingly enough, it's a very passive B hold. So it's a 1-4 one, one on A, but already they lose one. Traded back by Glaive. Good shot, Lucky. Oh, Dupree through the smoke. Just absolutely saved the AWP. <laughs> Lucky was absolutely dead. No question. And Dupree nails it. Now they've just got Caserato coming around the corner. 10 HP. And Lucky gets that before the smoke plumes. Falls back to the site either way. Had a good position for it. Yuri's got to do something of this. But with 34 seconds, bomb down. I don't think he even bothers. They're going to be so mad when they look at the replay and realize how Dupree got that kill that saved Lucky's life. That might have provided him something, because then you have a player coming out of halls, and you actually have the player coming up lane that can both pressure Magus. I want to point out one thing. Glaive rotates over to the A bomb site after that initial contact, which means Astralis left a, U a Zipnix with no nades and yep. 8 HP as the sole defender of the B bomb site. They knew That's it was happening risky. that whole time. 
Also, the low HP Zipnix. Yeah, that's 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 pretty foolish. But uh, round over, Yuri likes his weapon, uh, and he will get the out AK for one more round. And Dupree, despite his uh, rather disinterested look, actually leads the way with 11 kills. Even Mage just looks a little tired. They all look a little bit uh, calm, don't they? I suppose when you're Astralis, you know, yeah, it's just another game, boys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, after the intensity of uh, of having a uh, playing basically three best of three elimination series to get here, this probably there's a lot less pressure on their shoulders at this point. Although, obviously, the conversation for them had to have been let's let's not do that to ourselves twice, especially not in a stage that has this level of teams in it, and it's showing up in their gameplay. You want to talk? I mean, you just mentioned we're seeing that Inferno where Banana is contested hotly pretty much each and every round to start things out. Uh, Astralis is uh, comprehensively winning that engagement. Molotov deep toward the pits. Um... All according to plan. Sick. It actually could have been if he was intending for them to come around the corner and thought they were closer, but it looked like he actually was trying to get it behind the half wall, I thought. Maybe he's just that good, and he just knows exactly how to bounce stuff. Well, he'd love to have the Molotov right now. <laughs> he's got absolutely nothing out in the open. He's got at least one headshot. And through the smoke, Zipnix isn't going to get any of those kills. Bombs toss over, so R doesn't have to deal with the random spam with only 9 HP. There's going to be one flank in Dupree coming from Banana, but three players to retake. Oh. Ooh, make that two as Art thins the herd. And he's going to go back around and try and cut apart Dupree as well. And Banana doesn't want to reface on 9 HP. Has the information that's good enough. Go help his teammate inside of the site. Flash goes high, high enough. He doesn't have to worry about Whoa. it. He knew that flash was thrown from CT. Why is he not looking at it? Was he that concerned of the timing? Zipix walks in and takes down Yuri easily for that. That's a head scratcher. I am confused. You don't see that every day. Confucius say. Look away. I guess maybe he could have thought that the flash was thrown and someone jumped in towards construction. Which is still not improbable, but You'd expect that that flash is helping, like, there's there's three, right? There's, there's still a missing player in that equation. Yeah, that's all I've got. But also, I mean, look, it's, it's also a high-pressure situation. He's got 9 HP. He's trying to do something aggressive. He knows he's got one flanking banana. He knows he's going to have him retaking, you know, through construction as well. He's trying to get aggressive and find something that he can do to get himself out of that scenario and make things easier for his teammate. And sometimes you just, you know, you make a risk in, at that level and... Obviously didn't work again. Oh. Aggression down mid, aggression into alt mid. Uh, Astralis want to be done with this match. Yeah, that's kind of the impression that I'm getting from their face. They want to get us back on schedule, right? They're like, you know, guys, come on. Let's let's just get this done. It, it also, like, remember, one of the, some of the things we talked about, we touched on them in the pre-match as well, but obviously if you want to go through some of the strengths that Furia might have is making things chaotic. Their executes, the hard entry style of art and what kind of space he can create for his teammates to give guys like Caserato and Yuri some open space to take some fights. Like, Astralis, by being this aggressive, you're denying them banana. So there's some trademark Furia executes at the B bomb site they have not been able to actually pull off because they're spending time, utility, and lives to take that portion of the map. Now you see them pushing down, what, for the second time in this game, and again, going into a gun round after you're getting battered, you talk things over, you call a strategy, you're running up to your position to kind of start, you know, thinking about the strategy you're going to execute, and all of a sudden you've got Astralis players in your face, so you never get able, you're never able to pull off your plan. So Astralis is doing just a really good job of destroying whatever Furia wants to do before they can even execute. Double from Glaive to close it down. Jason, uh, the bomb sites have been fixed. That was a while ago. All right, man, look. <laughs> Not to call you out or So anything. all I do, right, here's the thing, Jason. I'm going <laughs> to reveal it for everyone. The things I notice, I talk about with great confidence so that I can mask all the things that I actually don't notice. <laughs> okay? So everyone's like, wow, Giving you away see the so game. much in the, in the cast. Yeah, there's a lot I don't see. I just don't make attention for that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ruin it for me. It's been going so well. I'll never do it again. My bad. <laughs> Eight to three. It's a five round lead. Timeout called by Furia. Twelve kills for Dupree, ten for Lucky, twelve on Zipnix as well. For Furia, it's Caserato and Yuri tied at six frags apiece to lead the way. 
And then two players at four, and then Art at two. Dupree's gonna get really aggressive this round as well. He's, oh, he's already down. He's gone actually past Yuri. I think what he just did was as as he's running, he dropped a nade in the window room, and I I guess that could be to hide. I'm assuming that's Ask to hide his footsteps. footsteps. That's pretty smart. The, the timing of that. Okay, so he's called Boiler. This is fine. This is actually great. As long as they can react and hold accordingly. So the two players at A are going to set up a crossfire back off because they know there's a chance that can still go into the apartment hallway. And as they're in Banana, here he comes. They're going to think this is no chance. Now, timing is that they're coming back this direction. So they're actually looking this way. He gets one, though. Tries to convert the spray. Can't. Art stays alive, but it's still significant. He holds the back line. And they are so limited with what they can do right now in this round. With Yuri going down, that's, that's pretty much it. That's over. Gotta feel bad. It, it, Fury is being made to look foolish right now. That's how well Astralis is playing. And I mean, how many rounds have they started with a man up pretty early on? And, and with their experience and expertise, able to really exploit the man advantage situations. Caserato snuck into a decent position to maybe try and find a cheeky kill on Zipnix, but he, he lives. He gets away with 13 HP. Glaive is blind, but good trade from Zipnix right at the end. 9-3. And a four round run for Astralis. Four rounds on the bounce after, yeah, giving up quite a few back to Furia. May just back in toward middle this time. That again, deep throw smoke, uh, top mid smoke thrown by Astralis. And it's going to be a faster play for Furia as they start to work out toward Boiler, the apartments, and the top of middle through the smoke they go. And Majisk lets them know that he is indeed there. And he ain't taking no one as prisoner. He's getting them all down before they wrap around, even though the smoke's on the other side. They're still trying to do damage as Dupree puts it in. Glaive will pop back out, and he's got a chance to go for all five. Excuse me, I lied. It was not him. It was Magist that started there. They shuffled and switched so fast, even I was confused by it. Houdini. There's been 13 rounds played. Astralis has the opening kill in 12 of them. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Yeah. Fury is not even able to fight back. And I, mean, I feel like frequently, like, we don't have a stat for it, obviously, but I feel like they probably have the majority of the second kills in the round as well. <laughs> I feel like the number of times I've seen Astralis playing 5 on 3 is, uh... Man, tough situation. Lucky's got 98 damage with the AWP on K Serato. Vinny sneaking around inside of the apartments, trying to make something of this. Let's see if they can get the opening pick. Then they've got Caserato down to two HP, so they nearly lost it again, Jason. But he's still alive. Still alive, for now. Molotovs in utility spent to apply pressure, as if Fury is taking brackets. There's another first kill. Make it 13 of 14, going to Astralis and even the second kill as Dupree finds Vinny up towards the A bomb site and again just no progress for the Brazilian side nothing they can do at the moment drop trying to find some window of opportunity some fight that he can take and it's just not there the only real danger the only real thing that Fury has going for them is this guy right here the position of Yuri up towards rap side backstab towards the B bomb site but at some point you can already see Lucky's considering the possibility of it with that AWP 30 seconds on the clock. Oh, Yuri. Lucky is removed, and the fact that he's now in CT makes this a huge problem because there's two in B, though, mind you, so it's not like it's the end of the world, but it still means that the rotations are not anywhere near. Palm is in banana, thankfully, but the smoke is very lackluster. Actually, it kind of smokes them off. Drop gets one. Shots out. Glaive's gone. That's pretty, pretty... Okay. Pretty quick and concise. Uh, and that time, Jason, it goes their way. With the pick or not, they still get the round, and the bomb goes down, and we go four rounds for Furia. It's not over yet. They're going to go for this for sure. Dupree's got one flashbang. He's got a Molotov as well. He could actually flush Caserato out of his position. If he's not fast enough, Caserato could burn if he can pull it off. There's the Molotov. Actually, excuse me, Caserato stepped forward into first oranges. 
Oh, good pre-fire on the corner as Magus. Oh, he could have almost done that, and Drop's going to find the final kill, and Furia... You doubted my prediction. They take a three on five. I, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I wasn't even sure they were going to go for it. I thought they might stagger <laughs> that for exits. But no, I got right. so they much money with it. two rounds left. Yeah. So. Uh, yes, it is going to be their uh, round Furia. So they get one more to go for them on the T side before we swap over. If they make this 10-5 and they win the pistol in the second half, absolutely they can make something of this particular match. Problem is, like, that round that they just won, it's a three on five, and they like I've, they just won their fights. Like, that that's that's kind of it. Like, it was just, like, Yuri swinging into an op duel and finding a first bullet headshot, and then Zibnix failed his battle in the back. Ooh, another, finally, a second opening kill. Traded immediately, but traded right back. Art's going to be running through the fire. 60 HP left on him. For the moment, it's just lucky inside of the A bomb site with an AWP, and that's it. For now, Art still holding on to the archway side. He's going to bounce that Molotov off to the corner side. Moto. It won't necessarily do much to deter Dupree's position. But they'll wrap with the man advantage, and Dupree has vision over toward apartment. In fact, he's going to rush it out, sees the smoke, knows what this means, knows they don't have a player in pit. He's got to get back in the sight. Lucky missing the shot. Dupree's there to get him at least one. It's Zipix that will find drop on the other. Lucky could not land the AWP, and Zipix is left in a one versus two, and he's being stared at by Vinny on the other side of that smoke toward the pit, and they both look that direction. He sprays back. That confirms he has not gone for the wrap. And he hasn't spotted Vinny ducking down at this point, but he wants to go forward. He's just not sure exactly where they are. Trying to bait them out. Sees the fact that the shot comes over from the right side. But time is ticking. Round 15. The beauty of it means we get to go for it. But the rotation is such that the second player, Yuri, he's gone up to the apartments. This is going to be even harder for them to figure out for Zipix to try and pull apart and both peak at the same time. Vinny's already got the kill. All right, fair play. Furia finally showing a little bit of life, grabbing the last two rounds of the half to make it doable. 10-5 to 5 lead for Astralis, and they're going to switch over to their T side. And man, that, that half actually felt like it could have been way, way more dominant. That could have easily been 12-3. But Astralis looking good. If you had any questions about them in the Legend stage after seeing them in the Challenger stage, um, that's not a bad start to make you feel better about it. Yeah, that's. I'm sure there's lots of people that are pleased that uh, this is is turning around for them. Many Astralis fans in the world. There's no qu question about that. No doubt about it. As we'll get underway immediately. No halftime breaks here. We don't want the action stop. We bring it all to you. With the PGL Major and man, oh man, I am excited to get the stock on to get to the Avicii Arena to get in front of the crowd again. Ah, it's gonna be just goosebumps immediately. So excited for Counter-Strike. Maybe some tears. Stage. Certainly will be for some of the players, um, and probably you, because you're an emotional man. Shots back out. Here he gets Glaive. Watch for Lucky. He's trying to fade away and stay alive. He has to stay alive. Look at how concise this pistol round is. Crossfire from Furia. Astralis goes nowhere, and everyone's dead already. Okay, that pistol round, including the two final rounds of the first half, puts Furia within striking distance, and especially if they can convert the second round, that'd be magnificent. And I think they... they should be able to. I think Astralis. I'd be curious if they if they went to force by here. And it's just going to be Glaive. Three hundred bucks spent on a P two fifty. Astralis is going to be waiting for the AK forty sevens in the next round. Four SMGs and the M four on Vinny. Deep nades, flashbang. Glaive is blind and taken down. And it's Furia who's going to convincingly and emphatically take control of Banana and now middle and now head towards T House. Drop takes down Magis because he continues that push with the MP9 and Art finds Lucky trying to lurk underneath in the sewer. It's actually just called the underpass, but it sounds more dramatic if it's wet and grimy and the man decided to be there and is a criminal, you know? It's just more dramatic and narrative that way. It was, yeah. Didn't, uh,. Mm -hmm. Sapphire and Cash Guy, Volcano slash Abandoned Us for Valorant. Didn't they get married on a the like real life looking inferno? No. I thought they did. No, that was uh XP three. XP three, that's Emily. right. Yep. And Emily, yeah, that's right, Emily. A lot of people have done it at this point. Do you wanna get married there? No, I'm good. I meant with me, not with Jane, just to be Oh well, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Sweet. Just in case you had any confusion <laughs> at all, I just thought I'd clarify that. He had opened with it. Yeah. 
probably should have, actually. What don't a romantic proposal that was. Don't know why I thought it was. Yeah, I'm a pretty romantic, thoughtful guy. <laughs> Put a lot into that. As Glaive puts a lot of uh, bullets inside of the smoke, making sure no one's pushed down the uh, position behind Majisk inside of Banana. As Quesarada will start to lead off and uh, go toward the arch. Hasn't faded yet. They're going to keep a four stack on A with a single defender on B. That single defender is actually even considering rotating off. Art, hello? He doesn't have any utility left other than a incendiary. Did they swap him? They could consider it, but... So far, they're not. They could, but no one's close. Okay, Serato's got no nades. Drop has no nades. Those are the two rap side players, so not like they'd do any better. Art's going to stick there with that Molotov. He spots it out, and ooh, I'm, they're going to beat that one. At least one player is an Art, and he can't go through for sure. So Astralis is held back by the Flames for the moment, but they're going to get into this bomb site. and then with three SMGs, how does Furia want to do this retake? Do they want to do it at all? They've got three players pushing down mid, and they'll be going up against Zipnik's in Banana, Dupree will join him as well. Tipix has the angle held off behind the board. He can fade off to the half wall quickly. Finds none, actually, excuse me. Both kills came from Glaive. It's Zipix now that wants to support his teammate. And I think at this point in time, Fury is bailing out and going home. They are doing exactly that. So Astralis will find 11 to 7 by way of just walking into the B site. Yeah, they lost, obviously, half, half of that retake. Two players went down to Glaive coming from CT spawn, and that makes things uh, very iffy. Excuse me, not towards CT spawn, towards Coffin and construction. 11th round for Astralis. They grab the uh, the first gun round of the second half. And right back on the board, all five players surviving. They get a bonus money, but remember, this is a round two where Fury was playing with a lot of SMGs. They get to upgrade their weapons as well. Art is going to bust out the AWP. So, Lucky, soaking it all in in his first major with Astralis. Magus will take the charge to go up toward Banana, and Lucky with the AK this time is going to go up middle, but that's going to be a problem because Case are up. So, I thought he had that. He's frustrated with that miss, too. That's how he fires the blind shot into the wall. Like, ah, come on, just give me something. Yeah. That should have been a huge pick for Fury to take, but they just couldn't get away with it. That's that's that is definitely frustrating. There's no question, especially like you said, the stat where they just haven't had the opening picks at all. Right. Yeah, it's been. I mean, the first half was so so tough for them. I think they only got two opening kills in that first half. Probably a few more in the second half, obviously. But they struggled with the early going in the rounds. At least, at least here they get a challenge and fall back into the bomb site. Art is going to be in front of the Molotov. He can't fall back, holding his smoke in case they throw another. That's just going to give away his position in Glaive. Oh, he's going to feast upon that, surely. Oh, somehow he doesn't die. Somehow he gets away. That's a lot of HP from Art. It took his final smoke away as well. He's going to get the SMGs dropped in his hand, but it's the op that's been pulled over as well. An extra player, which weakens this A defense. Bomb retrieved by Astralis. And they're going to readdress on the map. And there's a timing. There's a decent window here for Astralis to hit this bomb site. So the smoke goes down in the archway. Glaive wants to wrap drop, wants to try and beat them to it, but guess what? Unfortunately, it's a little cloudy these days in the library. Most people can just get it on Amazon. Thanks, Jeffrey Bezos, for your book-selling invention. So they don't need library at all. It's going to be lucky to take down Yuri. He's got bomb. He wants to go for the plane quickly. Thankfully, Zipix is nearby and doing good work to keep them contained so as they can't go through and deny that. But it still is the man advantage now for Astralis, despite HP suggesting otherwise. And the other aspect of this is the kits. There is not one in play. There are two. Thank you, Observer, for toggling that on toward the pit. But that still takes about two or three seconds to get over toward. And the bomb is not planted on the close side of the pit either. It's deeper in the site than that. So it is absolutely still a factor. And I think Furia knows it. A bit more economic damage to get Glaive down, I suppose. Yeah, it's that, and also, like, obviously the economy is just not good for the CT side at the moment. Drop with 350, Vinny with 300, Yuri with 850, you lose those weapons. At least now, in this round, they can have the conversation. They have the opportunity. Case Serato can drop an M4, Art can buy one by himself. They can actually have some people, and, you know, Zonic can't do it, but Glaive's getting hyped up. He's getting the boys in the mood. Fist bumps all around. Fist bumps for everyone, Jason. Um, yeah, hopefully lots more of those to come. Danish fist bumps.
Is there a difference? You'd be surprised. Well, when it comes to Zonic, it's obviously code, right? That's what everyone's saying. <laughs> so. Why? I just. <laughs> it's just the memes. It's just the memes. Memeable. Speaking of fist bumps, um, yeah, in Stockholm. Let's. I'm, I'm hoping. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have some hand sanitizer. I'm happy to fist bump, but uh, let's not get too close. Let's not get too crowded. Let's respect the uh, the social distancing a little bit, Jason. Oh yeah. But it's gonna be great to see everyone. <laughs> It is going to be great. Thousands of our closest Swedish friends. Glaive tossing out the flashbang towards the mid ramp in case Serato wants to go for a cheeky look down mid. But he's not super committed to the idea. Ooh. Glaive is a... Even at like 12 and 14, I feel like Glaive has had like a really good game. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, I can see your point because he's definitely had some contribution. Uh, impact. Imp exactly that. Similar to uh, a few Roy. different. Exactly. Roy was the one I was going to get to, but a few different players we've seen so far this event in terms of multi kills as opposed to overall kills. Um, May just bottom side middle. Hold on for this play at top side of mid. Bomb still waiting at the ult mid connector because there's not a lot of attention toward Quad, and Case Serato's there with Yuri above. Now, they spotted both when they peeked, so they have to get away. It leaves Case Serato stuck underneath the atrium, but he makes no mistake with it. I wasn't sure how you get away with that one, because only one player can fall back, and the op gets left on his own. But man, oh man, he makes good on it. They now have the man advantage. Yeah, Yuri, Yuri bailed out of that so fast. Part of it, too, you could see he was very, very worried about a player coming out of the holes behind him, which is the perfect counter to that kind of a setup. Detail as well, Astralis, you'll, I mean, as much as we talk about how good their utility is, misses the Molotov in that round to force the player out of position, and that was brutal. Drop is above the flames, but low HP player first was gonna let Magus know where he is, but Vinny ends things, both of them actually, through the smoke. And did it now? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking there's a chance here. As uh, I'm just going to give you a B stream update as well, Jason. It's 12 to nine in favor of Nip over Mouse Sports. Ooh, okay. And uh, Mouse Sports currently that is on Inferno. So um, apparently that was 12 three and a half. So they're on a bit of a comeback right now. I think everyone in everyone in the world, everyone watching this, these two matches going right now, would love to see a Nip Astralis matchup at some oh, point during the stage. Yeah, uh, at any point in the major. Yeah. I think, like, we need that. We need Ooh. that blood blue brewing rivalry. Yuri's got three this time, so it's his turn, just like Kay Serato last time, to shut down Astralis single-handedly. Bomb will be recovered by Zipix, but there's not going to be a lot of options for them now. With a minute and 23 left as well. Look where those kills came. Inside at alt middle. That is an aggressive push, you have to say, but it pays off for Yuri. And that's what we know Furia for. There's aggressive pushes. Inferno admittedly limits how much you can do. It's not like... Uh, famously, my favorite position for art is T side rushing catwalk on Mirage, goes through the smoke, and boom, he's in the B yeah. site before you know it. It doesn't have that, but um, yeah, they still find an opening. And he, yeah, that's going to be painful. He had a really fast timing on that push. All that's really left now is Vegas and Zipnix attacking this bomb site. If they can go, I mean, if, if they don't lose anyone, which is very is possible, if Megas gets a, 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 sh a great shot, drop is boosted up above. I don't know if he'll expect it. If already even just jiggle piece. Oh, he does pre-fire. He gets the kill. And if you can put Zipnix into a one versus two clutch, if he finds this kill before the rest of the players can show up, that'd be so massive. He needs that frag and he's got it. Bomb goes down. One versus two for the clutch minister. Clutch minister. And now it's time for him to be an absolute master as he wants to flash himself doubly so back out, but he's gonna stay at orange as one. Swanks wants to get new box, gets himself out by way of a victory and a headshot against Vinny and the rotation. K Serato, he's coming around from banana and he knows that Zipix is low, so he's using the pistol rather than the AWP. And Zipix just has to play time, but there is still a lot of it. He's picked up Molotovs. Exactly that. He went for a utility, knew he could force him out, and K Serato got not only that, but an AK to pick up. And he'll get the win, 12 to 9. Oh, the Molotov, the deciding factor in that 1v1. This is great from Fury, though. The way they fought themselves back into this game, considering the way the first half went, they're not too far back, all things considered. This CT side is looking pretty solid so far. So Astralis is going to get tested here down the stretch to see if they can close out this lone map.
still rather calm. And remember, the draw comes up immediately after these games, these matches. You'll join the desk uh, on the A-stream with Richard Lewis and the boys. I think Thorne will be joining as well. And they'll, uh, they'll go over what's going to be the best of ones for the rest of the day to determine who goes 2-0 and on day one and who goes 0-2 and and faces elimination. And it's, yeah, that's, that's the cutthroat nature of the major. It's hard to believe that Wednesday will be flying to Sweden, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we get to have a party, baby, as the major will reach the top eight. Yuri, he's ready as the incendiary goes inside of Boiler. He's not going to allow any aggression from Astralis on that side. It's going to be everyone inside middle. In fact, they're going to rotate back over, but another smoke deployed, another defensive bit of utility to hold off the tease in case Serato ready when they do jump around that arch. Double flashbang. He's going to look into it, smartly dumps away, and that brings Yuri back into the other side. Bomb dropped for the moment, Jason, and I think this one's uh, pretty straightforward at this point. Not much for Astralis to do. Yeah, certainly is now. Glaive in the one versus five. He's going to go down. Tough part, too, is they don't even have Fury anywhere close to a breaking point in terms of their money. Fury has got, a, I mean, with all five players surviving there especially, they've got some money in the bank. Seems we'll get a timeout of some sort, either tactical or tactical. Looks technical. Yeah, it kind of sounded like you said the same thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> you got a tactical or a tactical, you know? It's going to be one of the one. <laughs> Oh man, this is, this is going to be interesting. You know, Astralis a little bit on the back foot, maybe? Ever since that Yuri push in the halls, it's been three in a row for the Furious side of things, so catching a little bit of momentum as well as building up some money. Well, and if they're not careful, Jason, you might get that Nip Astralis matchup uh, a little bit later on today, but it might be in an 0-1-1 match. Uh-oh. Because Mouse is back up now to 10. It's 13-10, so that's a, uh, from 12-3 to 10-13, a massive run for Mouse Sports to be on currently. And uh, this one's starting to slip from Astralis, if they're not careful, as if you've been paying attention at all, you definitely are aware. 17 kills on Yuri, 16 on Serato, 12 on Drop and Vinny. For Astralis, it's 19 kills on Zipnix, 17 on Dupree, 14 on Lucky, 13 and 12 on Magus and Glaive. No talking for anyone during this timeout. Stressful scenario as well, just sitting and waiting. So we're going to replace a set of in-ears, apparently. Some sound issues for one of the players, so that'll be done shortly. Gives us a chance to catch our breath and get ready for what is going to be a pretty closely contested final bit to this map. Uh, and, yeah, Astral is starting to come flat. They've got two rounds in this half so far. Both of those are bomb explosions. And uh, with that, obviously, you said it, the, the efficiency of the last few rounds have, it's been spectacular. One bomb planted of those last three as well. So it's it's been a lot of just straight killing. The last one, all five staying alive. And they they do look, I mean, they look great in the server, but when I see them on camera, they look a little flat astralis just in terms of their body language in person on camera. But but obviously uh it, it doesn't it doesn't reflect yet, but maybe if they start to fall off that that might be something in that. Ooh, and a, a tactical timeout called by Zonic there, you could see it yeah. right at the end. He says, wait, I want to have a chat. I want to get involved. And he, of course, the reason that he does that is because he has to respect the fact that the technical has to finish first because yeah. you have to get the correct amount of time given for the timeout. You can't g gain an advantage by uh, sort of backing them like that. So, yeah, that's why he calls it. But terrorist timeout, the second for Astralis. That was your pig that time, by the way. Or was that a horse? That sounded more like a neigh, didn't it? Then a... It didn't sound like a pig. It sounded like a... Like a, that was the worst neigh ever. I'm, that I'm was gonna, pretty I'm bad. I'm not. I'm done. <laughs> no more sound effects for me. Okay. I'm like, I need a shock caller. Every time I sing or make a sound effect, just like... Zzz. I think we still have them from the... Uh, oh, I have the them. The November home. trivia Tr Trust game. me, I took those. Those hurt, dude. Yeah. Those hurt a lot. Poor Henry. I cranked it up to Mac. Hit him with <laughs> you it. Did. He knew I was going to do it, too. He was, like, ready for it, but I still oh, got it. It did not feel good. 12 to 10, two round lead for Astralis. 
Art's going to push down Banana, drop in support, and they see absolutely nobody from Astralis even fighting for it. So uh, that's going to mean immediately drop is going to rotate away. So is K Serato. Started with a three man B setup, and it looks like Astralis kind of want to pull the trigger on a tactic from, uh, from distance. Four defenders here at this bomb site. Dupree's going to lead the way. Everything's clear. Vinny finds one before being traded. Yuri's still alive in the pit, and just enough kills are coming out. Bomb hits the deck. Oh, Yuri knows Dupree is there. Oh, what a great headshot for Dupree. Much needed to give them some safety and some space to get things planted and take a breath and prepare for the retake. And that nade goes far side of the box. Magist takes the brunt of it, but still survives. And that second smoke that went down in front of the library was just enough for Dupree to get out of Graveyard. He gets back inside of the pit where he's... A little bit more of a problem, man. Man, these nades, though. The Molotov, is that going to spread? No. Bucky's going to be left in the corner, and Majisk sees them jumping over. The Vespa is enough to show the head, and Majisk makes sure he gets both kills. Okay, Serato's going to bail, and Astralis come away with one after the timeout to make it now 13 to 10. Yeah, nicely done. And that look, that that's, that's a really nice hit, especially considering Fury had four players there. There was no presence in Banana for Astralis, and Fury found that out immediately, and they... With four players stacking that bomb site, that can be very, very difficult. The Strauss doesn't even try and hide that. It's just get to your position and let's pull the trigger. That kill the pre finds in towards pit is critical. Makes that a one front battle for the retake, and Magus is able to get a double kill and do some work. So 13 to 10 as the Strauss creeps a little bit closer to victory. Zipix with a new set of specs since we've last, well, since I've last seen them. I'm sure everyone's seen the glasses by now, but uh, on the stage. And uh, yeah, another, I think another issue with the sound, but we'll make sure that it's sorted this time. Yeah, you're going to go down there personally and check? Yeah, I'll, I'll be there in five <laughs> minutes from Bucharest to Sp Stockholm, just like that. Come on, Jason, don't ask stupid questions. Ah. Uh. Little smile from uh, from Glaive there. Absolutely, I do like the uh, the branded PGL chairs for this. As we get some notes taken by the coach, uh, and I, of course, I did say it was Greary. My bad. I know better than that uh, at the start. But yes, by the Fury coach. So still taking notes. He's still able to communicate with himself shortly, right? Or do you have to like shut down your mind completely now? Yeah. Speaking of stupid questions, Matt. Okay, got him there. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> You know, the difference was mine had some humor behind it. Okay, all right. Yours was just rude. It was just mean. Mean spirited. Oh, spirit is not even left in this event. Don't that's you're you're worse than Duncan. I forgot about that. It's all right. There'll be a thread made about you in no What time. song do you think Dupree's dancing to in his head? It's Friday, what? Saturday, Sunday, da da. I don't know. That's what Lando Norris dances to. Okay. Um I, I don't know, push me. And then just touch me so I can get my <laughs> gratisfaction. Ah, gratisfaction. Gratisfaction. See what I you did stuck there? that one in there. Yeah, not bad. But, uh, yeah, no, I don't know. What do you think he's dancing to? Uh, it was, I figured it was probably some, like, Danish pop song that I don't know about. Celine Dion? Yeah. Alanis Morissette. I said Danish. I know, but I'm just going with Canadians because, <laughs> okay. you know, why not? Because you don't know any Danish pop artists? No, I know none. Oh, I, I do know some Danish artists. Okay. Uh, Mew, F the Clang. Uh, those are probably the two that I would listen to from Denmark the most. So that's it. That's all I got. All right. Those are the two that would be on my playlists. And that's about it. And I think F the Clang's lost it. I think the early albums were incredibly creative. Lived up to the name, which essentially means reverberation in Danish, apparently. And uh, now they've just become a little too generic for me. Well, I went through a phase where Anders was sending me Danish heavy metal songs for a while. Oh, God. Do you know, and I, look, we talked about this last night because Blaze and Metalheads. Yes. And uh, yeah, you were there, weren't you, when we started talking For parts about of it, yeah. Yeah, so I never wanted to tell Thor in this because it's just ammunition of some sort. Go. But there is, and this was coincidental, I didn't know about it until after I had my name when I was looking it up once. There is a Swedish death metal ma band named Sadokist. Yeah. So there you go. I'm going to Sweden as Sadokist. Maybe we'll listen to some. I've never listened to them, and I don't know if I want to. 
You should. Just, I mean, why not? I, yeah, why wouldn't I? I think I'm scared. Someone's going to tweet a song at you for sure. I mean, I can find it. I've seen it on Spotify. I've just never listened to it. Nah, like. get in there, man. Don't be afraid of that. <sighs> Can we put it on in the green room together on like a speaker and just have that collective experience? Sure. All right, let's do that. Let's I don't. Do I don't that. know if I can handle it alone. It might scare me. It's gonna make you change your name. <laughs> yeah, it might. Imagine that's the thing that finally makes me change it. <laughs> but yes, we are just waiting to make sure that they fix this completely. Uh, pres if it's the same player, I didn't get that information. Presumably the switch of the in ears didn't quite work, and therefore it might be a sound card issue, or perhaps the jack on the computer that they're plugging into has a problem, so they'll have to swap that around. Typically speaking, I don't know what desks, you don't really, I haven't really seen a camera angle of the desks, um, but typically the tournament desks have jacks built into the desks that are then USB powered to right. the PC. And therefore, you can run a shorter headset and still, you know, reach and things like that. But if that jack dies, uh, you'd have to swap out that whole box or you just go down to the, the tower, but you can't always reach that. So sometimes it's like a very simple thing to fix, but it's like the logistics of getting it all set up to do so. I do like the, the actual good tournament setups where you've got the, uh, you know, all of the accessory and peripheral jacks straight on the desk, very easy and clean to plug into. Yeah. And quick as well. You're Makes not, it super easy. Yeah, you're not fiddling around behind the PC, knocking out other cables, delaying things further. Yeah. It's it's nice. It's convenient. I think it was Zowie who obviously sponsor this event, uh, and, and their monitors are brilliant, and that's what they're using in this tournament. Uh, I think Zowie was the one that was building that crazy desk. Like the I tried to get one of those for so long. I yes. I think Chad got to test it. I was at Starlighter. We were in Shanghai, and they invited us over to test it. I, I never got time to go over and try it, but Chad was saying it was amazing, and he said the same thing. He's like, I want one. Yeah. And you could actually mount your well, computer directly into it. The like, problem was they're not, they're not, they weren't for retail as far as I Yes, know. they were for high-end land space, centers yeah. and events. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, they were extremely expensive. As yeah, well, they were like the development costs. multiple thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know whatever happened with that production. I know that most of the most of the stock for them uh, was in China because that's where they were testing them, developing them. Okay. And uh, we were at the Star Ladder that was uh, beside the um, TV. How Mao TV is that right? How I have no idea. What's the What's the Chinese streaming platform again? How Mao is that right? Is it? Oh. I should know this. Yeah, I should. I think I think that might be right. I can, I can never. There's two of them, and I never remember which. But anyway, they're they're uh, Ken Yang works for them now, but it was right next to there, and uh, and I think that they had the most of them there for testing. So, okay. yeah, that's a fun that's a fun trip down memory lane. Yeah, it's just cool to see some of these prototypes in action. But there's it's like it's that small consideration to detail that you know the esports industry is now large enough to justify the production costs for things like that and investment, for yeah. companies to do it. Yeah, the investment. So it's 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 pretty cool to see the development of that side of it as well, because it certainly makes a difference for the players. Well, apparently somebody needs to improve in ear technology. Looks like uh, looks like we might, might be getting back. I think they're just testing to make sure everything works. Ah, it's Hoya TV. That's exactly what it is. Thank you. Nice. Thank you to the one or two people I could actually read your messages from between all the ridiculous Astralis spam that's in chat. You know what? I hope Astralis lose just so you can all shut up. <laughs> Aggressive, of course. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, look, I already told them I'd fight them all once today, right? You did. So. You did go down that road. Yeah, it's fine. We're all friends here, of course. All still mates. Yep. Camaraderie at an all-time high. Yeah, all-time high. Well, a little bit of uh, highlights for you here. It's a story of two halves, really. Dominant uh, Astralis opening half. Uh, at one point, what, sitting at 10... Uh, what was it? Why can't I think of it? At one point, sitting at, like, I think... 11 to 2? 10 to 2? Yeah, no, 10 to 3. And then Furia comes back. I don't know why I struggled so much with, with doing the math in my own brain. Um, but, I mean, really, uh, it was also a half of Counter-Strike where Furia only managed to get one opening kill on their T-side or two opening kills on their T-side throughout the entirety of it. Astralis was just running away with everything, playing 5 on 4s all day long, playing 5 on 3s all day long, and running up a massive scoreline. Furia did just enough and then won the second half pistol round uh, to make this a believable comeback from them, a believable game from them. And now on their own CT side, they're, they're doing pretty good work, all things considered. They've won three of the last four. They've closed the gap to just three rounds away. It's 13 to 10, in case you forgot, for when we come back in the favor of Astralis. 
Uh, and, and guys like Yuri and Kay Serato playing pretty good. 17 and 16 kills on the two of them. Absolutely. Just to give you an update as well, the this is the last remaining opening match in play. The other one has finished, and NIP have beaten Mouse Sports 16 to 12. So they were able to push that one across the finish line again. As I said, that one was also uh, on Inferno. So, um, yeah, pretty solid result for them overall, uh, I suppose. Did ha Brilliant first half. Like I say, it was 12 to 3. It was a bit closer when they did swap over to the T side, but they were able to close it out. And uh, Device led the way at 24 19 with a 1.27 rating, uh, just slightly better than Hampus on a 1.26. I have Nip going 3 0, and I have Mouse Sports going 0 3. So if that had gone the other way, it would have ruined two of my predictions in my pickums, and that would have uh, that would have made me a very sad human being. That, yes. Um would have been tough for you. On day one as well. That would have been just like, peace. Again, that's why I don't do pickums, just predictions. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I'm a coward. Mostly, that's why. Yuri had a lovely uh, series and sequences of rounds from this position at Quad, as well as Kisarado, the round where we saw Yuri kind of bail out. You said mentioning, he was kind of watching the uh, apartment hallway, which would counter that play. But it has been back and forth in a lot of these situations in the post plants. You know, Astralis is getting near the site, but they're so damaged and hindered when they do so. And even at times, they've gotten there, but they just can't get the plant done because there's just so much activity going against them. Okay. Now it's looking like we're ready to get underway. A lot of talking going on. A lot of people saying speaking words. Speaking words. Lips moving. Making sounds. We're back, baby. Round 24. Let's get it on. 13 to 10. And the last time we came out of a technical timeout, Zonic added a tactical on the back of it, and that started Astralis. Uh, that was their 13th round. That was their 13th round. That, that got them going a little bit. So uh, we'll see if they can continue with that momentum. But obviously, there is guns on both sides. A bit more aggression toward Banana. Again, that's where we're seeing a lot of the contention towards, and that's typical for an Astralis game on this map. As a result, though, they have already brought Quesarado back over, and they're going to go quick. Smoke down. Quesarado, AWP, wants to try and get in. Drop Quesarado. He does it. He gets through the smoke and takes down Lucky. And Zipix, he's burning. He's gotten away from it. It's Orange's two, not one, so he can't find Art. And he's got to be so aware. Yes, sees the shoulder. He saw him. He's going to spray it down, and he'll hold his nerve and hold the trigger to make sure Art falls. As Quesarado tries to get in position, there are additional smokes deployed. Ooh. But not now. Oh, not now. He's got the shot. They don't have time to plant it. This is what I was saying. They get on the site, but they can't pull it off. Dupree, he manages to get it back, but still Vinny can go through this. He knows they haven't planted, and he knows one player is going to be occupied doing so, but instead they'll use the time to their favor and try and get Vinny into a position where they can straight up win the duel, but his crosshair is ready, and it goes again to Vinny. And now Zipix, another clutch for him to try and win, to try and hold on. He came close the last time, but was outdone by a gun swap. Oh, just barely, Vinny. Second, less than a second away from seeing him cross back over. He has the bomb. He could go either direction, <laughs> well, but he's trying to look exactly which direction. How does he get away with that both times? That's so wild. Vinny missed the timing of Zipnix going back to Banana. And then, and then Zipnix missed the timing of Vinny what? moving oh. in, and he still wins it out. The peak. And Zipnix adds a clutch. 23 kills to his name. And you said they look tired and exhausted, not Glaive. Yeah, not him at all. He's going to cheer for him and Zonic now. He's going to be loud and proud, and absolutely, that'll put them much closer to the finish because you mentioned as well the money. There was still a lot of it for Fury yet? Not anymore. Dwindling after two straight losses. Ooh, that's a tough round to lose. That's not bad from Fury the fight back, but... Again, timing in those situations is just everything. So, 14 to 10, a four-round lead. And I've got good news, Matt. This one's a tactical. <laughs> got very good news. It's... Is it tactical? Is that what he said? He did say tactical, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, that, that doesn't that indicate that it is? Obviously, I Glaive getting vocal about this. He wouldn't be talking at all if it was technical, Jason. I didn't see the Fury guys talking when he initially said it. Sorry, producer. I should have believed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was nice about it. He, he was nice he about it. He was very all. generous. He'll probably punch me later. <laughs> Zipnix <laughs> is a stunning clutch again. Four-round lead. You're just getting all the late games for the <laughs> week now. You've done us in. Here come. Oh, we wanted the run boost across, and they messed it up and just canceled it, and the shot whizzes between the kneecaps. But it was like a hesitation to cancel it. He was like, no, no, come on. No, get out of the way. I'd like to keep going. And then, yeah, you're right. He just barely missed that shot. Furia with the sole AWP. That pick would have been massive for them to get. Obviously, the gun wouldn't have been recoverable, but it's still a pick. It's still something to work with in the round. 
And a favoritism toward A at this point in time as well with that AWP over on... Uh, excuse me, on B with that AWP over toward A. They leave a third player at B by CT spawn. All quiet on the western front. Yeah, for the moment. Uh, ever since that that technical turn tactical by Zonic, and they called that tactic, they've Astralis really really simplified things and made sure they fall back into a more execute heavy style, not spreading out, not taking some kind of duels and losing too many players, not letting the round get away from them. It's more been like let's just establish some safety in the early going and throw our smokes and attack the bomb site. Now they're going right at the AWP and the Deagle of K Serato, but that can't track players fast enough. And Art probably feels like he's screwed. Probably feels like he has no exit. He might find some safety. Goes back for more. And I'm not sure why he's doing this. There, there's no chance they go for this round with three deagles. So, yeah, I'm happy to see him getting out. Lucky's not able to punish as well. I think he was aware of the possibility a little bit too late. Regardless, Astralis is going to be up 15 to 10. A map point there for... Like we said, a draw comes up after this map. They'll join, well, we'll join. Avail on the A stream, join the desk if they haven't already, and we'll figure out the rest of the day. So Glaive and company inside of the pit will fade off to the corner, and uh, Dozia is not around, so they'll all survive this time. Bomb's actually further away. It's on the far side of the site anyway, so even less damage to be dealt. And it's... Do or die time for Furia. Reminder as well. Your 1-0 teams so far. NIP, Navi, Virtus Pro, only by two rounds over Vital Vitality, who fall to the 0-1 bracket. And Tropic and Gambits, as well as G2 and FaZe. So we're just waiting for this one to conclude. Biggest names, I think, in the, in the losing side of that team. Liquid didn't look very hot against Entropic. Uh, EG obviously didn't really, I shouldn't say obviously, but I think predictably didn't come out of the gate swinging, but still a little lower of a What's score than we would have expected. What's the difference between obviously and predictably? Obvious makes it sound like, oh, obviously they weren't going to do anything. Uh, predictably means, you know, unfortunately it wasn't like okay. we expected much. You know, it's it's a little different. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's fair. it's I'm the, just the semantics matter, Jason. Just keeping you on your toes, Matt. I don't want you to get away with these things. I'm not going to let it slide. Well, uh, jokes on you. I don't have any toes. So <laughs> you can't keep me on them, Jason. <laughs> Bless it all. <laughs> This one's certainly taking a while to get through uh, between the sound issues and now all the timeouts, but this is how important this game is to both of these teams. Uh, certainly for Furia, they want to get off to the right start, and it's not looking likely. Astralis are doing everything in their power to make sure that they can close this out as well with all of the timeouts now going in. This one obviously called by Furia, but uh, both teams can talk, just to be clear as well, since we have talked a lot about timeouts and coaches, etc. Both teams can talk during a tactical timeout regardless of who calls it, so... Um, they're taking advantage of this one called by the other team this time as we are back to live in the server and we'll, we'll jump in to see exactly how this one concludes if there's more rounds left or if we call it right now. Here we go. Saved AWP on K Serato. Two from us, a Deagle and an MP9. That's all that Furia have to fight with and Art's going to push up in front of the smoke. He's going to go down. Another opening kill for Astralis that's lucky to log that, and he's having a decent enough game. 15 and 11. Oh. Good kill from K. Serato. Can he actually escape? There is flames keeping him up front, and they didn't realize it. It's their own Molotov. Drop as well, but Dupree, he can still turn this round on its head. If he can find a way, if him and Magus can find a way to meet up. Oh, that's so tough. Oh, that's so tough, Mage. Just... I'm surprised he goes back for this. I'm very surprised he goes back, but he gets one. Now the call is where did he go? Because you've got the defense completely split, but they have Dupree so far away that if the bomb goes down, I don't exactly know how Dupree wins this. Yeah, well, if you're if you're Magus, if you're Magus, you're telling Dupree Man. to do something. Yeah, the follow-up peak as well for Magus. I thought he'd play that passive for Dupree to open things up. Ooh. They know the AWP is on the A bomb set. It got two kills initially in lane, so a free plant and a very, very difficult clutch for K Serato to keep Furia alive. That is so ball. Ballsy from Majisk. Not only does he repeat when he had a chance to run middle and potentially meet Dupree on A, he goes for the second one. We'll take it. 
Oh, he absolutely will. He goes down there. I don't think they win this round because they're so easily able to cover that ball. Meanwhile, Incendiary goes out. Majisk is forced off of that. He can't go near it. He's got 23 HP only. And it'll be the Famos instead for Kay Serato, but it's Dupree that pushes through. The man who got position will close out the round, the game, and the opening stage of our Legends portion of the major. I nearly said challengers again. It has been a challenge. It has been a challenge. It was a challenge at different points for Astralis in this, but I mean, both halves, once they gained control, they never relinquished it again. And obviously, you got to see the smiles on their face and just be like, thank God we don't start in an O and 2 hole again.